building an opening repertoire is a big task. Uh, it becomes easier as you get older because you know a lot of openings. Uh, anyway, we had a little bit of uh, thinking about what should be the DM Talks opening repertoire. And uh, I come to decide that it's going to be the Karakan as black against e4. So, uh, in order to uh, practice as you preach, I've started to play the Karakan with black. And yesterday I played against the, the Swedish Grandmaster Johnny Hector in the Danish League. And I got a chance to uh, test the Karakan against him. So, let's get into it uh, with the... The moves, by the way, uh, in after I played a lot with with Johnny, and uh, I have had in in general very bad results. I think he's the player I lost most rating to overall of all the players in the world. I lost so many games against him. Also won a lot, but clearly lost more than I won. So he's kind of an angst gegner for me. So I'm always uh, sort of uh, when I'm playing him because he's so tricky, and uh, I don't. I don't really understand what he's doing, but anyway, and it also seems he plays pretty well against me. Anyway, it was an important match yesterday. He always opens with e4. I have uh, against him. I played c5. Uh, I played both the knight of the Karakan and the Svesnikov and the Taimanov and the Khan uh, against, and also the Richter Rauser. So I played all Sicilians with black, and I played of course e5. And la last game I played against uh, Johnny, he played uh, the Belgrade Gambit and won uh, a pretty annoying game actually uh, for me, uh, where I thought I was okay and then I just got outplayed. And this happens a lot. He's very good at drumming up some sort of attack. Uh, by the way, I also played e6, knight f6, and d6, and so on, um, and a little bit of uh, d5 and so on. But but Karakan. Only when I was uh, very young, and uh, but it's time to go back. It's become a fighting opening. It's an interesting opening. By the way, I expected him to, uh, oops, to play something like uh, this, which he has played uh, in most recent games, and which is a serious variation, but also also kind of a variation that will lead to the kind of game I would prefer. Because as I know that strategically I'm clearly better than Johnny, and tactically he's uh, clearly better than me. Uh, so if we can have a strategic battle where uh, the finer points is important, I will outplay him. Uh, I had a period where I won almost all the games against him, uh, and then somehow I forgot how I did that and started to lose again. Uh, and uh, hopefully this game is marks the end of that. Anyway, uh, he had prepared to, uh, apparently to go d4. Um, and we are building the repertoire here. And of course, these moves are sort of what you always do. And then comes the interesting question. Um, against e5, in the last uh, league match, I played uh, c5 here. I think it's a good idea to look at both moves, both c5 and d5, they, and bishop f5. They lead to very different positions, but it's probably a good idea to have both lines in your repertoire. Anyway, the, the positions are, in both lines, very strategically rich and interesting, and I like to play these kind of positions, so I don't mind uh, e5, even though I think it's a critical move. Uh, another move I prepared for, for Johnny was if we go f3, uh, which is, is also something that he would do um, because he would love to have an open AEF file. Uh, so F3 here, the so-called fantasy variation. It looks very antipositional. I think I decided to go G6. It looks like the most natural move uh, against the F3. Doesn't really look like the antidote to the Gurgenitsa system. Anyway, he went knight D2. And take is, of course, uh, the idea. And here... Um, well, I have not decided, We I play this move, but I have not decided that this is the move we're going to play in the repertoire. I'm also looking a little bit at this move, which is uh, what, what Firusha does, and it cannot be bad. It, it simply must be a reasonable good move. And I even think uh, this move is, is probably okay. And I know that Keith Arkel still plays this every time and does uh, rather okay. The, the, this move is a little bit annoying and Black is not so happy with the position that arises after these moves. Anyway, Knight F6 
is the way uh, Schandorfer champions it in his new book on the Karakan, and that's what we are going to play so, uh, so far and take. And when I was a junior, uh, Bent Larsen wrote a book about uh, GTX F6, um, the Bronstein Larsen variation, and uh, I was very successful with this line. I now come to realize it's not a good line. Unfortunately, it's very sort of. Uh, Fascinating line, but it's I'm not sure it's correct. But e takes f6 is is how they do it uh, nowadays. And uh, I was always thinking this was the worst line for black because now white has uh, uh, this one extra on the queen side and is just waiting to go into an ending, make a majority on the queen side, uh, create a pass pawn and win. But it's not so simple. First of all. Uh, Black has all these uh, files. By the way, there is another video here on GM Talks where we discuss this system, and I recommend you check it out. It's in the playlist, the Karakan Defense. Bishop e3. Well, the reason why this line became popular was due to this, uh, this funny idea for Black. Uh, Queen c2, Rook e8 check, and here h5 which is looks so crazy but but it's both a good uh, defensive and offensive uh, move because it sort of disturbs white setup uh, the knight would like to sit here but the pawn is coming and uh, and of course uh, the, the the pawn was threatened here earlier uh, black did something like this and was often um, uh, crushed with with this move and h6 was considered a bit passive, but not never, nevertheless uh, playable. By the way, one of the things I like about playing this line against Johnny is that you have an extra pawn in your king side. That's nice. It's a sort of, if you lose one pawn, you still have three to defend yourself. Uh, because you know he's always trying to brew some sort of a king side attack. Anyway, bishop e3. That's uh, what they are doing nowadays. And I had decided, I've, I hadn't really checked it. I decided that, okay, if you go bishop e3, I think the main line is still bishop d6 castle rook e8 knight d7 or something but i decided i'm going to go knight d6 and then we're going to have a random score i don't know it's of course played before please notice that something like this uh, you're not going to let your pawn structure be ruined you just take it back here and have the bishop pair and white has some serious problems on the white squares a3 and i kind of like uh, this because this is sort of forced you don't want the knight to to b4 and, uh, and d5 or uh, bishop f5 and stuff. Um, here I could consider this move uh, would make uh, make some sense actually. But uh, I played this move uh, and he goes c4 preventing knight d5. And maybe this is a little bit passive played by black. Uh, I'm not really convinced I like it. I have not studied this very much. It's not sort of some big preparation. Uh, the idea of course is that he usually, Johnny would love to castle queenside, uh, so he would like to do something like this. But with the pawn on c4, black will always have something like this, and this square here will come under black control, and that will always lead to some sort of initiative on the queen side, where his king will be heading. And mating uh, Johnny is something I really would love to do. Bishop d6, bishop belongs here. The, the thing is, of course, with the knights on c7, uh, it, it has to go back. But at the moment, this doesn't look very sensible because uh, the d5 square castle. And I had was thinking long about castle, queen c2. And I know that uh, h5 is the move, but what about queen d1 or something? Mm, I'm not, not sure. Uh, but I decided already that with these moves in here, He's much more vulnerable on, uh, especially here. So I'm just gonna, uh, and, and cannot really castle queen size. So I'm just gonna play h6 and play it in the passive way. I, the most logical move is probably d6. And just saying, okay, we we got not the same thing because I will have much more counterplay here later. So something like uh, this is probably very unclear. What I didn't like about this is that he gets his knight to f3, which is uh, is a bit more aggressive than e2. Uh, so I decided to play h6 and say, okay, I still have uh, these pawns. And by the way, usually 
Hector is not very good at exploiting weak squares uh, in a position like like uh, like that. This this is now weakened, of course, with with h6 played, but it's not. It's not really what what Gianni does uh, when he's winning. So so I'm not uh, I'm I'm okay with giving this kind of uh, concessions. Uh, there are other concessions that I would definitely not like to make against uh, Gianni. Anyway, knight e2, uh, and here there's no doubt that White is slightly better here. He has a nice uh, structure, and and but black is very solid uh, at the moment. Uh, having all these pawns here is is making it much more difficult to to attack. And uh, there are some counterplay. By the way, um, maybe it was. By the way, this move was uh, based on a check on h2. What I was saying? Okay, if he does something like this, and here and here and maybe this. Uh, and if it's take here, then uh, my plan was to go something like this. I think it works. Yeah, it does work. Anyway, that was uh, I, I did. I have not checked the game with the computer. Uh, Bishop d7. I was not. Mm, the, but but I was maybe a little bit afraid of Bishop uh, b4 now. But the most logical move is actually a5 here uh, to play a4. And sort of undermining this square. And if he goes a4, then he gives away this square. So no matter what he does, uh, I would get this knight to something somewhere nice. So I think maybe a5 is a better move. I was, I was maybe afraid, but maybe I should just sack a pawn. And by the way, when he knights go that way, I might someday go against this guy down here because he does not have many defenders anymore. Anyway, bishop d7, rook e1. Rook c8, um, weird move, felt like uh, was, uh, I like this body check against the queen, but mm, maybe it's not the best move. Knight e3 and uh, knight e6, and I, I was very confused here, and this is typical what happens against Johnny for me. I just don't feel comfortable in the middle game somehow. I managed to get some positions where I don't really know what's going on. Anyway, I was sure that he would go here, and I don't think that's the best move because actually it's a sort of a tactical weak. Oops, sorry, um, tactical weakness with 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 this guy here so uh, and and this pawn will be weak at some point so I, I was not so afraid of this even though it's always intimidating when a knight is near your your um, king side by the way uh, a common rule of thumb is that when you have a bishop here against uh, it almost always defends against a knight here so this is in general a good idea of course uh, the thing is, if there is something in the way here, then there's this check. So, and here that would be a disaster with this one here. So there will be some uh, ups here, right? I'll just uh, and and this one is lost. Anyway, that's far away. But you uh, better you when you're playing a guy like Diani, you gotta have tactical wisdom. Okay, Queen D2, interesting move. B takes C4. Thing is, if he goes Queen D4, I take on D3. And uh, and I'll allow him to take on f7, but my king is on h7, so I will not be mated. I thought at least. So he has to take back. And here comes the, the probably a shocking move, g6. And that's why it's nice to have uh, four pawns in your king position because when you lose one of them, you still have one, three, and and a, and a, and a decently uh, successful uh, kingside events. He takes, 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 and knight takes, and here I thought he was okay. I'm okay now. It's fine. Um, and uh, and the initiative is sort of drifting here. I think White is probably still slightly better if he plays very well, but he did not. Uh, Bishop e3 is probably already a mistake. C5. And the thing is, this knight here is much better than the bishops. This knight is a, is a monster. It's, uh, it's sitting there. And and you think, oh, I have the bishop pair, so I should be better. But mm, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's this is, 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 is definitely nice for... Uh, for for black uh, who has uh, the bishop cannot attack anything we also see that this to make a hole here they need a pawn to move and that will not be easy because black will be very active 
Rook A2, weird move. Uh, of course, the idea is to uh, get out of any kind of uh, tricks and, and be able to swing it to one of these squares. Anyway, uh, Queen A5. I'm not sure. I, I thought it was. I liked the move when I played it. I'm not sure anymore. Uh, maybe since just a simple bishop c6 is good. Uh, the idea is, of course, that uh, there are some uh, some some tricky stuff down here, preventing a lot of uh, his ideas. So bishop d2 is probably forced uh, to get the queen away. And then I thought this was smart, uh, hitting here, defending here and uh, being very active and also hitting here keeping his rook down on this square and rook e3 a little bit weird bishop e6 attacking the pawn here with two pieces queen f1 and here and here is an interesting question for you dear viewer would you like to exchange a rook or not exchange a rook it's not an easy question um, I just didn't take on e3. I could have done that. So the answer is probably I don't want to exchange a rook because at the moment he's a bit disjointed and it will be easier to defend these two bishops that don't sit very well anywhere at the moment uh, with if there was only one rook. So I'm just saying, okay, uh, and where is the weakness here? The weakness is probably mostly tactical in this direction, so this move makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Bishop c3, getting rid of stuff on the c file, but black is clearly for choice here. Um, rook c6, I'm not sure about that move. It, I thought it was very difficult to, to decide here. I thought that it was smart to, to sort of get ready to, to to make a cannon here and also i like uh, when i'm playing against well in general i like to defend pieces but in when i'm playing against a guy like uh, johnny i especially like to keep my king side safe i even though i didn't quite manage it actually uh, h4 natural move but it does weaken this square and uh, so on um, but of course sometimes this could be interesting bishop f5 the time has come to get rid of the bishop pair and the, the the really annoying thing is he cannot take on d4 i just take back with the pawn and win the pawn on c4 so he has to take this one and that was not the part but i'm i know johnny and he's still hoping that this bishop here oops sorry um sorry ah oh, hate that button this bishop here will make a big role in in the attack somewhere um rugi for good squares for it defending here and here here and hoping to maybe play h5 or something rook here threatening to go all the way and then and, and sort of showing that so rook a1 he uh, acknowledged that this was maybe not the best idea rook d3 is also kind of a nice move uh, and a very natural thing you're looking for uh, for activity and uh, pieces that are hanging and uh, here Yanni was running short of time, so I couldn't resist the trap. Queen c6 is probably not the best move. Uh, the threat is very obvious. It's to to take here. <laughs> um, let's make that red. Um, I'll do it like this, <laughs> and 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 winning uh, um, winning the, the the piece. So he has to cover it. King d7, good move. Uh, if he goes h5, I can probably just take it. Um, it's possible. Also go t5. It's not like it's gonna ruin my king structure anyway. Queen e2. And here uh, a good move, I think the best move maybe is something like uh, this. And and I think black is more or less clearly better. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's it's not so easy for for white to to find a move actually. Um, instead, I um, I decided to try. I, I was looking at Rook D1, uh, and then I realized that that was probably not a good idea. Um, 
since he can probably be take 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 and play queen d5, which was 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 making me a little bit nervous. This this d pawn would be strong. I can show you. Uh, I was I was calculating something like this. Queen d5 looks so strange. Uh, the thing, the idea of of course to get a pass pawn here, and and the problem is that this is just not good. Because <laughs> this, this pawn is gonna gonna do something bad, so that that was a bit of a scary line. So instead, I went queen a4, but as I said, queen d6 is is probably a clear advantage for black. Uh, the, the knight is simply just much better in this kind of position than the bishop. The bishop is colorblind, and uh, there are some structures. G4. I was like, what is that? And I thought, okay, I can always go rook d1 and and take the ending, and that's probably fine. Uh, but what about can I what what is is going on here? Can I just take this pawn? Um, and then I started to calculate a lot here, uh, and I realized that his his idea was of course. Um, so let's try to see what I, what I saw. I thought, okay, knight takes h4 is uh, is what you want to do. And the thing is, it's threatening this move. So uh, so for instance, if if I take on d h4, then d5 knight f3 is just uh, winning. Uh, because I take with the knight here, and I can always uh, even go knight h7 and, and cover f6 if, it, if if that's the problem, or just rook d6 or something. So so f6 is not good. So that was the problem, not his idea. His idea was ah, then realized okay, if I take, he's gonna go rook f4, and then I started to calculate what if I do an exchange sacrifice uh, after rook f4. And uh, and I've convinced myself that that was very promising to rook d1, queen c6, queen d6, and rook d2, and uh, winning. And of course, it was not that clear. You can try and calculate, stop the video, and try to calculate all the way through. And so, and also uh, check out if you miss something because I missed something here. And and Johnny did too because uh, d4 is a brilliant move. And uh, after this move. Uh, why should not go rook f4 as he did? He should play this move. What? And uh, after this move, he has d5, and he is um, <laughs> and and I probably have to play something like this. And and this position is is still I play rook d1, go into a rook ending, uh, and I'm I'm still better, but it's probably a draw. So. Oh, and maybe he also threatening queen e5, so it's not even clear I can do that. Hmm, interesting. Not so easy. Maybe I have to go queen e8. Okay, so this is 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 more or less unclear. Probably it's fine for black, but it's it's um, you have to be careful. It's nice that we have this square for check on b2. Anyway, he didn't play that. And he didn't see it. And um, and uh, when when I, I went to this position, I did check this position with the computer. Uh, um, it, it of course it immediately sees Bishop takes f6. Uh, but rook f4 was of course his idea. And here comes the line. Uh, it, it looks kind of bad now because there is a serious threat here. So, but this of course is is the kind of exchange sacrifice you can do in your sleep. You can just feel it must be good somehow, right? Um, and check and queen c6 so there's a problem here and problem here so what to do um, what I've seen first of all was was that that f3 that looks like the natural defense it just loses completely against this move and it's totally uh, totally winning for for white um, there's both, <laughs> both this and uh, and this problem. So, uh, but of course, queen e rook e4. But I still thought this was good, and um, and of course, king a3, rook e3. But he does have this move, and then I thought, okay, after this move, I had this move, and I'm winning. And then play queen e3, and it was not so clear. But it is actually pretty clear. Uh, and these kind of things, you just know it must be somehow good for black. After all, uh, his pieces are really clumsy, and and the uh, and you just have to accept, okay, I'm not. It was not a winning attack, but it's still very promising attack.
and d5 is a uh, has a nice move. But I thought I saw I thought of something would show up, and when I came to this position, I was getting a little bit confused. It was move 40, but okay, d5. I thought okay, if if this knight comes here, here. And here, and by the way, my king is very safe. His king is in trouble. I have uh, very active pieces, and he's uh, he cannot coordinate in any way. So, and it is winning. Uh, Rook e8, uh, only more or less only move uh, actually, and uh, knight e6, and rook c8, and here the computer likes rook d4, uh, but it's also okay with rook a2. Which was was the play? I mean, it's kind of why, by the way, nice to have this uh, uh, rook in a place where it cannot be threatened from a diagonal. Uh, so it keeps eye on this, keeps getting keep an eye on this, and uh, of course keeps an eye on, on on this guy down here. So rook takes e5, uh, knight f4, and I was um, I was curious about this move. And, and the computer is very, very clear. I just take it, and uh, after something like uh, this, it's the attack is totally winning, which is a surprise. I just zigzag all the way up and wins, which was uh, a little bit, uh, you, can, you can test it yourself. So, uh, so this is, was good, rook c8, and here is the white, a black to move. And it's very difficult to find the best move here. Uh, so I'm kind of proud I did. Uh, and, and people were staring around this and thought I missed something, that something was wrong. And, uh, and by the way, it looks a little bit scary, but of course you cannot do this immediately uh, because this one is hanging. Um, and especially you cannot do it after Black's move. Uh, so, so what kind of attacking ideas are there? There's this king here. How can we get to that? This rook is sort of defensive, but as we, we all know, rooks are not the best defenders. Uh, but it, it does serve something here. It does uh, defend some people. Uh, uh, anyway, then you realize, wouldn't it be nice if I could give a check on the H file? And then you may catch on to the idea. So what I did here was play this move. Uh, and I thought it threatened this move. And, uh, and and something bad is coming, and uh, I also thought that it's written this move, uh, which it doesn't, <laughs> because uh, the computer could easily tell me if, if for instance black play white plays are we just gonna play a random move after queen like something like this, then this move would be a mistake due to this move, and uh, and after something like this um, <laughs> you have to to uh, to play rook f3 and go into a bad ending. So that was surprising that there was nothing there. Uh, I was a little bit um, weird. So it doesn't win, but after this, of course, this just wins. There's no defense uh, at all. Uh, and uh, but what about this move? What was Black's idea? Um, and here it comes Queen C2, and say, okay, but are you gonna take this one? No. And, and here is a, is the trick. It's very very difficult to see long queen moves backwards so the queen is coming to uh, the h file and uh, that's gonna hurt a lot so that was the idea he played rook f1 or probably the best move check queen d4 threatening to take on d4 and um, if you go something like this then i have this move and uh, we could say something like this here, threatening mate on t2 and knight e2, and I'm gonna take here, and then I'm gonna take here. So, um, and of course, this move is uh, is not better because of this. And so, what what else is there? There's this move, and it's your move now with black. What to do here? And this was also kind of nice. And I felt pretty good here after this move. Uh, rook e2. Just threatening the queen. And uh, the queen cannot defend the rook. And, um, well, uh, if he takes, takes and say, okay, I got two rooks, 
Problem is, this check is really unpleasant because I'm going to take this one afterwards. So um, that's kind of it feels sort of funny that you can be so helpless uh, with the king. So king g3, and I took here, and and here, uh, well, black is a clear piece up, so and I won very very easily. Uh, just put the rook on the a file and uh, push the h pawn, and then a check here at some point with the knight and mating him on g2 uh, with the rook. And and he played on for I don't know ten more moves, but it was probably more that due to disappointment that any real belief that he was anywhere near a uh, chance to save this game. So this was the Karakan defense opening repertoire for Black, starting out with a win against Hector. This was GM Talks. Thank you for watching.